force of nature. My name is Kanan. I'm the director of East Chief Farm. Six years. I guess this is the seventh year. We started in 2015. What do we do for the community? Well, saving these green spaces, or saving spaces and keeping them as open and green does a lot of good for the community. One, in a city, when everything is built up, there is lack of room for breathing space. And it's nice to have in an urban block a space that's open and green where you can sit and relax and breathe. Two, we offer education for school students, young adults like yourselves, and and other community members about how not to waste what we consider food waste, instead turn it into compost, how to deal with storm water instead of having water problems, turn it into a benefit for the garden, and how to garden in general. Because we are a food-oriented organization, we also buy food, fresh produce from around the state and make it available for people here. What, what we practice here is urban agriculture, which tends to be somewhat different from the general agriculture where there is a big difference in the size of the land, right? They talk about acres and we talk about square feet, in some cases square inches, you know, just like cities, so, so squeezed in, so there's not much space. So in that, it's not so much about how much food we produce, but it is about growing food. So people learn how to seed, when to seed something, when to transplant, when to, how to take care of a plant, how to harvest, and how to address any pest issues. Also in general, the food system, we think of food as something we eat and then I guess we're done. But the food system is a lot more than that. How much we consume, what we consume. Do we know what nutrition it has? Is it quality food? Does it have any high amount of chemical toxic substances? And then the produce, the, the waste that we produce, what do we do with that? So we, love, we show people composting. Strawberry fields forever. Hi, I'm Heather O'Brien. I'm the education coordinator at Easty Farm. The Produce for the People project came about because we wanted to bring a CSA or community supported agriculture program to East Boston to make locally grown fresh organic produce available to people that don't historically have access to it. So we get our produce from some from Easty Farm and some from other local Massachusetts farmers and we bring it to East Boston in a price point that people can afford. These are rubet. Everything you see here was either harvested this morning or yesterday. Oh. Yeah, fresh, fresh. So that's the best part about the CSA. And then some things, like I do tell people, like we don't have the prettiest of vegetables, but it's all organic. What happens oftentimes, like people, corporations get to be selective in product, right? Okay. And we're using it, like many others, as an advantage to bring those produce that isn't in use. Not in this, these bags, but in other situations we have in the past. It's called gleaning. People glean. Um, there's people in the community, the soup kitchen. They find ways of bringing food that was about to go to waste and instead of feeding families in the neighborhood. I'm not even sure what a typical day is, but this past winter we've been pretty busy. We actually built this whole thing in the winter and um, we're going to continue to do that sort of work. So I'm Gabe Sierra. I'm the architect that AC Farm hired to um, work with them on the geothermal greenhouse project here. The walls, these three walls are polycarbonate and this wall is glass, so that gives a little visual transparency here. Um, the ceiling is glass, as you can see, and um, oh, this is a major feature is the fact that the center pitch here opens up, so providing natural ventilation, which is really nice. And the uh, the other, there's a few other features that make this a really um, sustainable type of architecture. Um, it doesn't use any um, gas from the grid, and it uses only a very small amount of electricity from the grid, just enough to open the roof. Um, and to turn on and off these geothermal heat pumps here. Um, so basically what these are doing, um, or what they will be doing when they're hooked up, is pulling um, heat or coldness out of the ground and turning that into cold or hot air, depending if it's winter or summer. We, as you can see, we have a rain barrel here that um, will be connected soon. And so all the rain from, from all four of these roof pitches will drain into that giant rain tank there. Um, so that will be used to water all the plants. 
I'm Alex, I'm the farm manager here at Eastie Farm. But prior to this, we only worked outside from whenever it was nice outside, which is usually late March until early November. But now with this, we can do all of our programming, which includes education work, food service work, distributing our CSA, distributing free food year round. A typical day, there really is no typical day. It's like we're a pretty lean crew. There's about four of us, two of us that work full time. So it's whatever is going on, somebody steps up and takes care of it. So my job, like my focus is the farm sites. Max, who is another worker, is like a lot behind the scenes and then working on food distribution. So yeah, we own two sites. The site that we're at right now, Six Chelsea Terrace, is our newest site that we own. It's been around for a couple of years. Like we had a garden where this greenhouse now sits. 294 Sumner Street is the original Eastie Farm location. We also own that one. We have, we lease through the city and in partnership with the Umana School at Our Garden is what it's called. It's on 293 Border Street and it's on a little cut through between Meridian and Border. And then we have school sites at the Allegheny School, Sam Adams Elementary, McKay, the Donald McKay School, and Bradley. So the tubes is a, is a makeshift job that I did. As we don't have any power right now and we don't have water. So everything that falls on top of this is gonna be caught and can be useful. So plants really like rainwater. It doesn't have chlorine or fluoride, which a lot of city water has. It's not gonna kill plants, but they prefer it without it because they grow outside and it just rains on them and that's how they grow. So we would like to harvest that water. So behind me is there's gonna be a rainwater tank. It's gonna be pretty large. Um, and then daily we'll use whatever's in there to water the plants. But this right now is just a makeshift. It'll look much cleaner when it actually comes. Thank you for being here. So when we talk about a transition from the kind of economy we have today to a more equitable, just, climate-friendly economy, one example is all the pipelines that we have for gas. Is gas a fossil fuel? Yes. Yes. What do you need to do geothermal work? Pipes. So people skilled working with pipes can transition from gas work to geothermal work. And we need to be sensitive to that kind of need. We can't leave people behind, right? as we transition our economy. So that kind of thought process has to be there. So I appreciate you guys being here. And also, we, we got help from labor to get this, get this very greenhouse here and get it going. So we appreciate that. Permanently, and now we're here today at the second location of Beastie Farm with this incredible greenhouse. And just to think about how this organization started with a little seed of an idea that pun was intended, all right? A little seed of an idea and grew to this incredible organization uh, that really activates the community in a special way. And it's much more than just food justice. I think that this is exactly what we need to see in this moment as we're emerging from the pandemic, how we will emerge together, different languages and different backgrounds, with union jobs, with a green future. I've been out to these farms a few times with Juana, I don't know who she is, and she's uh, shepherded me on how to uh, water the plants and pick um, the tomatoes. So, you know, you guys are really leading the way. We need to really be investing more as a city in urban farming, um, and, and we need alternatives to be shopping for food at big supermarkets where we can uh, grow the foods right in our backyard. So just want to support all the incredible work that you're doing on Earth Day and every day. So thank you very much. I wish you understanding, but never complacency. Showing up with my full splendor, shining under pressure, all to become a diamond. Showing up with my drive, no ignition, making my filters realistic fiction.
it's, the website is an easy place to go to learn something about us, but they can also come to our volunteer days. Our calendar is on the website, and people can come to our volunteer days and learn more about what we do. Buenas tardes, mi nombre es Juana Sánchez, estoy aquí para hacer saber que estamos dispuestos y disponibles para jugar en nuestros jardines. Yo llegué en el 2020 a hacer un voluntariado dentro del jardín de la Border Street, podar, trasplantar, limpiar, sacar hierba y sacar basura a la vez, y regando todos los días. Me gustaría hacer un taller de sacando hierba y también como regando, también de qué forma hay que abonar y trasplantar. Llamamos a la comunidad en un día, a veces, el año pasado lo hicimos a la, los sábados, tres horas, y enseñarle a las personas cosecha, cómo se siembra, y bueno, fue muy divertido, fue muy bonito, y también la gente, nuestra comunidad llevaba sus vegetales. We're nestled into the middle of, of the city here. There's a highway here and billboards and people's backyards right beyond. Um, so that's what I love about the building, is it's just like kind of situated right in the middle of a very active, multi-use type of space um, in the wonderful neighborhood of, of uh, East Boston here. I knew that I wanted to do something with my hands, and I knew that I wanted to farm, but I also knew that I wanted to live in a city. So urban farming is a good way to meet those things. And I've been here for three years now, and it's just, it's a really tight-knit community. If you're outside at a site, you'll probably get 15, 20 people stop by in two hours, ask how they can get involved, or just say something about the site, and it's a really nice feeling to just have that community involvement. It is a force of nature My name is Jose Andres Beseñac. I'm a senior at Irvoson High School. Uh, I am from Venezuela uh, and I lived four years in Argentina, then I moved here. So I have kind of traveled around the world. I'm really excited to work in this project because I will be able to work in a poster for it, making my own illustrations. I'm really thankful for your donation because every little bit helped. And in the future, I would like to be an illustrator or an animator in some kind of company. And kind of see my works all over the internet. That sounds really good. Hi, my name is Brian Clemos. Uh, I am a senior uh, at East Boston High School. And uh, I am from uh, El Salvador. Uh, I came to the US when I was a little. But the reason why I want to do this project, uh, it's because it could help me uh, a little more with filmmaking. And uh, I'm gonna be going to Fisher College. I got a scholarship uh, at Fisher. And uh, I've been to campus uh, over the summer. What I want, what I am trying to say is thank you for your donation. Hi, I'm Chris Leone. I'm 17 years old. I'm a junior at East Boston High School. Once I graduate, I hope to go to Boston University for business. I want to work on this project because I enjoy film and love editing, and I want to get better at these skills. I just want to thank everyone at EC Farms for giving us this opportunity, and I can't wait to get started on this project. Hello, my name is Karina Martinez. I am a senior in high school. I am 18 years old. A Mexican American, and something that I wanted to do after high school was get into culinary school, specifically Johnson and Wales. I wanted to join this project because it is something new to me and out of my comfort zone. So I thought this opportunity would be really cool. I am grateful for this. Thank you. 
Hello, my name is Mariel Familia. I'm a senior from East Boston High School. I'm from the Dominican Republic. After high school, I would like to be a filmmaking, and I want to thank everybody for letting me be part of this project. I would really like to gain more experience from this. Hi, my name is Fatima Navarro. I'm 17. I'm from El Salvador. I'm a senior at East Boston High School, and once I graduate, I'd like to do photography. I joined uh, EC Farms because it gives me an opportunity to work on my photography skills. Thank you. Thank you for your donations. Hola. What's up, guys? Today I'm here at EC Farms doing a vlog. Today is April 22nd, 2022. Doing? Huh? El gato. El gato. Meryl, do I have to pan to you? Ah. Child. Okay, ready? Put your foot there. There you go. Hold on, Brian. Hold on, Brian. There you go, Brian. Oh, it's a little smash your head off there. Yeah. Okay. Watch out, you. Do not spin me. I will kill you. I will kill you. Yeah. 